Hey guys, Illy here, and I just wanted to um, share with you a review of the spell items in the game. And I went ahead and wrote this out. Uh, Adonis had asked in the Tactics Discord if people who are experienced in the game could send him some reviews. I took it a step further and analyzed every single spell in the game. So I figured, hey, I don't play in tournaments. My opinion's free. It's completely you know, not going to be slanted one way or another based on my desire to have a specific card stay powerful for my use in a tournament. I don't have any thing to lose by telling you what I value because nobody's going to be caring about what I value because I just commentate. So wanted to start off going to go down Chinese. All of this is in alphabetical order by spell name in case you're interested. You can, of course, check it out in game or you can check it out on uh, Uakai's um, card builder website, which I will link in the description. Uh, starting off with Chinese, Celestial Guard. This card has seen literally no play in the game. And this card is, I think, I think it was a plus one with Pardon. And I want to double check that now. Because uh, now I am... Doubting myself, let's jump to Chinese, whoops. Jump to Chinese here. Yeah, Celestial Guard, it's a plus one and gives um, permanent spell immunity. I could see this being run in a new Ob Beast deck. If you stick this on a Stone Guardian, now all of a sudden, you know, the, the Egypt deck that can easily do that two damage and remove it, now you have to trade into this card. And I think... Celestial Guard could be quite excellent um, if it's given the opportunity to shine in a new Wild Beast deck. I don't think it'll see any play at all in a Guan Yu deck because Guan Yu doesn't want to develop minions as much as Nuwa does. Crescent Blade is an amazing hero ability. It synergizes with Al Quang with spell damage, but don't put this in your deck as a natural card. I used to do it, and it's horrible. It's bad. I, I tried to run in a Nuwa deck. I tried to make a spell damage Nuwa deck. And no, it, it had like beast package and spell damage package, and, and then it, it just kind of blah. It was it was horrible. But I mean, for Guan Yu, he's got it every turn that he's on the board. You just push two, so you don't need to run this card. But it works perfectly fine as a hero ability, and I don't think you adjust it um, just because you don't run it because it still sees play. Discord, Discord is everything goes random, and let me get the exact wording on it for you. Move all enemy units and leaders to a random adjacent tile. Okay. So that's nice. But the problem is, there's no guaranteed value from that. There's an opportunity for value, um, but there is no specific target value. And there's no reason to run it because of that. Maybe if it was like a low mana, like one mana target a specific unit that you want to teleport to a random location okay then you know maybe i can see that sort of being useful but in general there's just too many good cards in the new odd deck for this to be run um i could see the targeted unit one maybe being run in a guan yu deck but it doesn't benefit from spell damage and it's really just it's really just delaying the inevitable right you might get a good trade off of it but you also might get a horrible trade off of it there's no point in running Discord right now, and I'm not quite sure how you'd want to fix that. At the end of the day, RNG is still RNG. Dragon King. It's a great card, and the one of Legendary, the fact that it is a Legendary, makes it tricky to play around because you, you don't play around Dragon King. You know, if you have a choice between, I can make this great value trade and gain back the board, but that means I line up perfectly for Dragon King. Or I can not line up perfectly for Dragon King and make a slightly worse trade. Most of the time, you choose the lining up for Dragon King. Obviously, that seems bad, but at the end of the day, it's only 1 out of 25 cards in the deck. So I really love this card because you want to play around it, but if you can't, the punish is huge. So I, I really like where that card is at. Emperor's Prize. This is a horrible card in Guan Yu because he usually has a huge hand and a very small board, but it's really good in Nuwa where you're trying to spam out beasts, kind of 
mid-rangey Zeus style and try to get a lot of value from that card. Basically, Emperor's Prize draws you a card for every single allied unit that you have on board. So, I don't think it needs an adjustment, because if you adjust it too much, then Guan Yu loves it and he always runs it. And since it no longer procs on Summoning Stones, Guan doesn't run it anymore. Which means that Guan is a lot slower. And the problem with Guan in the past was he was just way too fast. Because you could just play Emperor's Prize and draw your whole deck. Basically throughout, way, way faster than the opponent could. Because you're always drawing three cards. Three mana draw three is very good. Two mana draw three is, or three mana draw two, excuse me, is the standard. So it was above average in Guan. Um... And in Nuwa, I think it will also be above average, and I think it'll be an excellent card in Nuwa. I don't think it currently needs adjustment, but if we do see Nuwa starting to take over the meta, then it, it could need a downward adjustment. But we'll, we'll play that off for now. Um, the easy way to do it would just be to say, don't count the leader. All right, Evolve. It's a good starter card, right? If you're new to the game and you packed Evolve, okay, well... Not great, but it's not horrible, and uh, you, you can possibly get some value out of it. Ugwe is excellent. Stone Guardian is excellent. So yeah, there, there's some play for that in a beast deck if you don't have all the cards. But that's like tier 2, tier 3 decks. You're never going to see it in a tier 1 deck. If you do, then I'm really not sure why, because it's a spell which synergizes more with Guan style, but it doesn't go off a of spell damage so it means more new it's it's in this awkward spot for high-end play and I, I don't expect to see it be run at all I, I don't think you should adjust it though because it's still a good starter card that that gives the players that have played for a while a sense that hey I've accomplished something I have more cards than you here's my advantage projection three mana that generally deals about five damage I'm getting that number from transfusion Chang'e um, Sun Wukong and um, other five attack cards. What's the other one that I was thinking of? Uh, Ugwe. Um, you can also deal three with like Stone Guardian, or you can deal uh, four with like BDK, uh, cards like that. But in general, you can deal about five damage a game if you save for the five damage. However, three mana deal five is very strong, but there's also a lot of times where you can't afford to wait for that five damage. Um, so you have a sort of player, you, you have to mentally challenge yourself, do I wait to get value from this card or do I have to play it now to remove something? And generally you have to play it right now, which means that because it is three mana, you generally cannot play one of those five attack cards from hand and then immediately cast projection, which means there's some play around it for the opposing side to see, you know, I've killed your board, I've played around projection. And then there's also play around it on your side, we're saying, I want to hold this high attack minion so I can play it and immediately get projection value. I think it's appropriate to leave the card where it stands uh, because there's no frustration factor. It's a good play. If you do it, it's not a broken play. Jade Boon is a great idea, but unfortunately, a lot of what we see currently is you play Dominion, it dies within two turns. And if it doesn't die within two turns, you have board control. So generally, it's a win more card. Um, because if this card would get value by buffing the attack value of a unit over multiple turns, you are probably going to lose anyway, because they spent that turn not developing another minion. I think this card needs immediate value, which means I think you need to play this and immediately get the one attack so you can immediately use that attack um, and then over time then buff it at the start of your next turn. So it would make it extremely strong. You're, you're buffing one attack on the first turn and then two attack on the next turn rather than zero attack on the first turn, one attack on the second turn. Since most cards are removed within two turns, it's a serious upswing for the card it does on average two damage more if you put it on a ranged character and if you put this on a stone guardian plus the other uh, buff card it was a plus one attack with uh, the, the celestial guard that's pretty nuts that's a two mana plus two damage immunity to spell now you grow an attack value type deal which is pretty nuts um and honestly with 
the the buff to it that I suggest, which is to immediate value buff it, um, it would see play in tier one decks almost certainly. I'm not sure if that would make it above the point of balance, and I am quite certain that if you do do that, you need to up grade the mana cost to two for somewhere between two mana and four mana uh, based on other averages around three damage manifold blade this ca this card stacks with beasts and spell damage um, the need to get a board to use this card makes it excellent but only conditionally excellent um, you can play it in in situations where you need less value and more tempo or you can wait for more value. And I really enjoy that thought process where you have to make a decision. Every time I play this card, I think, should I have waited? You know? It's it's like the same type of philosophy where if I'm playing Egypt deck against Norse and all of a sudden I see a soul spawn in the back, do I play my execute to kill that soul? You know, it's an it's a thought process of how much value do I need in this matchup? So I really like where that uh, Manifold Blade is at. Though I could certainly see it be reasonable to raise the mana cost to two. Recall. I would personally like to see this deck slightly altered to return a unit to the original owner's hand. Um, because currently in the game, there's very little counterplay to Phantom's Grasp. And... It's pretty much just you play a big minion and you hope they don't have Phantom's Grasp. It's a one of, you can't really play around it. And when you get later into the game, you know, there's only a 10% chance that they have the card if they've been drawing consistently. So, and that could be higher depending on the circumstance, obviously. But generally, I find myself not playing around Phantom's Grasp because it is a one of. Same type of deal when you saw Hearthstone with Reno decks. You never played around your opponent playing Reno on turn six because you couldn't afford to. And I think the same type of deal is present with Phantom Grasp in the current state where you just can't play around the card and you just get punished super hard and you lose the game. Whereas if you were to have Recall return it to the original owner's hand, it alters nearly none. In fact, yeah, this is the only Phantom Grasp is the only card in the game that steals a unit, um, other than Recruiter, which does allow some counterplay with Recall. To say, boom, you Recruitered that, I want it back, or boom, you Phantom Grasp that, I want it back. I still have to play the minion, I still have to develop the minion, but at least I still have it. So, I would like to see that change. I don't think it's necessary to change Habwa, however, um, because that's also developing a unit. Rushing Thunder. This card was bad when it was released, and then Alquang came along, and you got a 9-mana Annihilation. I really like where this card is. I don't think this needs much, much explanation. It's a, it's a good control option for Guan Yu, and even Nuwa runs it. Silence. Okay, Silence is a very powerful mechanic in this specific meta. However, there is a card in the game that's a 2-mana two 2-3 two, called Chaos Spawn that silences. Why would I run silence when I can just run chaos spawn? That's the question that you have to convince me of in order to put this card into my deck. And I don't see a reason why I need four silence effects in my deck because you almost certainly don't take chaos spawn out. Because if, if you're looking for a silence effect, you almost certainly don't take chaos spawn out and then when you have two chaos spawns what is the purpose of putting in more silences i don't particularly see one and the effect does have a place in the meta but there is no way to see how this card will work since it does not develop anything and that is a huge punish because this takes up a deck the deck slot, right? You have 25 cards in your deck. You cannot afford to put just silence. You have to put a minion in there. And because the game starts at two mana, mana curves choo, shoot up. So it's much more efficient to run a two mana two three than it is to run a zero mana silence. Transfusion is an excellent card. However, it is so strong on anything ranged. Cough, cough, Chang'e. Cough, cough, baboon, right? 
anything with a lot of HP and not a lot of attack. Uh, also, Hades if you start to reward it, right? Um, I don't think it needs to be changed for melees. However, I would suggest that you impose a penalty for using it on ranged units, since ranged units are generally above the point of balance by, excuse me, by default. I would suggest a minus two attack. I think that is uh, relevant and also not overdone th to make transfusion bad. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you play this on a Chang'a, you still got a 3-5 Chang'a that heals everything around it that's ranged, which I still think is excellent. So I don't have a problem with transfusion, but I do think it needs a nerf for ranged units. Into Egyptian, probably my favorite class in the game. Annihilation is a very strong removal in a pantheon that's themed around removal. It's a legendary, so it's only one of, so you have to like cross your fingers and hope you draw it. And I think it will always see play because of the potential value in it. And it deals six damage to the final objective, which is something that Egyptian struggles to do. It, Egyptian has always struggled to to end the game, which is why you see some Egyptian matchups going to fatigue and that being a win condition for Egypt, which is why Ra is just, well, one of the many reasons why Ra is insanely better than Isis. Appeasement. I have been doing a lot of raw appeasement testing decks. I've got a bunch of videos about it on, on my channel, and I think I want more time to explore how much value this card can bring. And it might be necessary to adjust it downwards. Initial thoughts, however, is because this meta is so rush focused or so early board focused. You know, it's it's the same as Smite, honestly. Smite is early mid game, mid game right now. And t Smite Tactics is very much aggro to mid range right now. And you don't really see any control decks being extremely viable. They're viable, but they aren't on the same level as mid range and aggro. So you lose a lot by removing even one damage from the board, because then you have to replay that leader. Um, but when you think about it, if you have enough card draw in your deck, and you draw before you appease, and you have both in your opening hand, you can get a lot of value. I'm saying, like, if you have, you know, six cards in your hand, you just gained nine mana, which is crazy because it's 12 mana minus the three cost of the card if you play one card and then gain nine mana oh my goodness you know you see how much impact emperor thorasan has on hearthstone matches you play this this card that reduces your hand by one and it's like oh my gosh i have to get rid of that right now appeasement does very much the same thing except you can play it early when the opponent doesn't have huge threats. So I currently think this is either balanced or above the point of balance, and it might need some adjustment, maybe less mana cost and less mana reduction. I'm thinking cost two to reduce by one might be a possibility, but currently I think there is a place for it. Um, and I would very much like to see somebody bring a appeasement deck to a tournament and see what happens. Um, but like I said, I don't play in them, so I just, I'll just have to wait. Book of the Dead. RNG is tricky in this game because you spawn this randomly. And with the invention of summoning stones, now you don't know where in the world your three random gods are going to spawn from. Give me battle cries. That's all I'm saying. Give the gods that spawn from Book of the Dead their battle cries and all of a sudden, you have a viable card. But currently, there's so much early mid-game, and there's so many cheap gods, right, that you just don't want to play this card. And even the expensive gods, you know, yay, I pulled an Anubis, six mana worth of value, woohoo! But at the end of the day, he's just a 4-5. He didn't get his, you know, two to six damage. Out on the board immediately which is what makes him so good and don't even mention the root right so i mean that's just one but 
I would really, really like to see this card get battle cries. Another reason is that Egypt only plays a couple of gods, unless you're super mid rangey Egypt, which, in my opinion, is a tier two deck. It's not a tier one deck. Um, I think it's better off to play control. I think you can make a tier one control deck that's worse than other tier one decks, but is still a tier one deck, whereas if you make a mid range raw deck, you're just playing a tier two deck. That's my opinion, personally. I could be wrong, but in a control raw deck, you don't play very many gods. So Book of the Dead is mostly coming from your opponent's god pool, which means it doesn't synergize with what your class, with what your pantheon wants to do. And allowing then that card to use war cries, I think, is worth quite a lot. Um, though that could be overpowered. So there's also the possibility of give me war cries, but reduce the god spawn to two. At the end of the day, it's still an RNG card, and I don't think Book of the Dead's going to see any play uh, while the meta is still so fast. Book of Thoth is an amazing control mirror card. I have been playing this game for a while now, and I have been playing control for a while now. In fact, control is my most played deck. My raw is like level 15 or so, which is higher than any of the other classes that I play. And... I've played exactly two control mirrors in my entire time of playing Smite Tactics. Exactly two. I'm level 48 in the game, so I, you know, I certainly haven't played it the most, but I have to imagine that's a pretty tiny percentage. Meta is way too fast for Book of Thoth. You cannot put this card in your control deck even because you just you, you, you can't get any value from it because you die. You play it and you die. Moving execute up to five mana really hurt this card because now you can't thoth into execute for a win condition. You can thoth into, here, let's check out exactly how many uh, four mana spell, oops, Egypt's at the top, four mana spells or less. So you can, you can get Fist of the Gods, which could be decent. Celestial Armor, which could be decent. Dying Wish, which is going to be horrible. Sunder, which is... I, it, I mean, it's not good. It's a... You, you cast two of them, and you did four damage. Okay, whatever. But, I mean, it, it's not the worst. Emperor's Health, which is probably not going to win you a game. We're, we're looking for answers to a mid-ranger and aggro deck right here, by the way, which is why Emperor's Health would be bad. Meditation, which could be cute, um, could uh, buff a Sobek to give you a win condition, but corner case. Sacrifice, which is awful. Scarab's Blessing, which is okay, but I mean, at that point, they're probably going for your stones anyway. Magma Slam, which is good, but you can only play one. Appeasement, which would be awful. Ward, which could be good it can, if you have cards left. Um, Cataclysm, which could be good, but again, you can only play one. Solar Sanctum could be okay. Um, Recruiter, which would probably be awful. Focused Blast, which only does two damage, so no, not good, though the heal could be useful. And Last Breath, which is the best card you can get from Thoth right now, in my opinion. Bottom line, oops. Bottom line, Book of Thoth is too slow, and I think lowering it to five mana would be appropriate. Oh, and then the last thing that I actually mentioned in here um, Sorcerer's Apprentice in Hearthstone is a very powerful card, and perhaps we need something that lowers spell mana cost for Ra. Um, I'm thinking Thoth the character, you know, could do that and um, could then make Book of Thoth quite useful because then you could play it for five, uh, which is very relevant, I think, because then you can use an execute. Cataclysm. Three mana is very good for a stun in a two by two. 
And I did a little bit of math stuff here, which you can read if you would like. Um, but in general, I think it's a tier one card right now. I think you run this in tier one decks. Um, some community members prefer Fist of the Gods over Cataclysm. But in my opinion, you can deal with a Loki with a Cataclysm, which you can't deal with a Loki with a Fist of the Gods, which to me means quite a bit and means that I'm going to run Cataclysm over Fist. And also, um, I run Cataclysm in my Appeasement deck, which gives it more value than Fist, and also, um, w when in Egypt, when you are playing Egypt, generally speaking, mana cost is less of an issue because almost all your cards are clunky. <laughs> so having one mana versus three mana, I don't think that makes that big of a difference. Celestial Armor has very strong potential, but I think it has stronger potential in Chinese than it does in Ra, or perhaps in even a Roman control deck. It greatly resembles Hearthstone Ice Block, which is gain immunity for a turn when you are lethal. Um, and in Hearthstone, that card is an essential portion of Freeze Mage, because a player can build up a lot of burst in hand, proc their ice block, they don't die, and then bang, next turn they just burst you from hand. Or over the period of two turns, they burst you from hand because they, they burst you one turn, they kill you, and then you burst them again in the second turn. So two turns of burst. But Ra doesn't have two turns of burst. So Ra can't use this card. Um, and Isis is shaping up to be more of a mid-range style um, if what happens what i think happens will happen with isis and guan yu has that kind of burst and bologna has the tools required to come maybe not come back but sustain through uh with a uh, with a reconstruct into a celestial armor into developing board on the celestial armor turn so i i think this card has a lot of value, but it's not reliable enough to see play. I would like to see Celestial Armor decks in the future, but I think Ra needs more burst from hand in order to make them viable. Um, and a lot of Ra burst is onto minions, not onto the end objective. Dying Wish. Our good friend Kenny makes a pretty strong case for this card to be good with Isis because you can cast it on Departed Warrior, which then, um, if you cast Isis ability, gives you a Departed Warrior, draws you a card, and then draws you three cards, which is four cards and a Departed Warrior for a Dying Wish, which is one mana. Pretty good, um, but currently there's not enough Isis synergy to make this deck. I don't think Dying Wish has a place in Ra, I think it only has a place in Isis, but right now it's good in corner cases, and not good overall. So, do I want to see more of it? Absolutely I do. Do I think we'll see more of it until Isis becomes decent? No. Emperor's Health is a fatigue card, but unfortunately, no games ever go to fatigue. Um, two mana for four HP on your leader is really bad, too. Right? Because it's your leader. Leader is no longer the win condition. So I don't care about four mana on my leader at all for HP on my leader really I'd rather just raw heal um, and this card is good for fatigue but in fatigue you've drawn your entire deck which implies that you've played your entire deck which implies that you want a higher mana cost card for more value which means just play Geb get one less health and get a 2-7 if you're going to fatigue, you're going to have time to play it. I think 4 HP on any friendly, however, could be a viable way to change Emperor's Health to make it relevant. 4 extra HP on a stone could be relevant. 4 extra HP on, I don't know, say a um, Kepri could be quite relevant. On the Crocodile, on an Anubis. You know, regardless, 
I think Emperor's Health is in a poor place right now and needs adjustment. Execute is insane and it's necessary for Ra and it's one of those cards that feels awful to play against because you literally can't play around it and if you do play around it then you've lost your win condition because most of the time your win condition is play more minions than he does. Oh, he has an answer for it? That's too bad. Um, and I think it's necessary for Ra and I'm not sure how you can alter this card to make it feel better to play against. Um, I think it's just a necessary card that needs to stay the way it is. I do like the change buffing it up to 5 mana, though. Fist of the Gods has an excellent concept, and many players will suggest that Fist of the Gods, many high-level players will suggest that Fist of the Gods is better than Cataclysm. And although I respectfully disagree... I still don't think this card needs to be touched because it does see effective tournament play. Focused Blast changed, and now it deals 2 and heals 3. Okay. It's one more damage swing uh, to a 5 damage swing, but the 4 damage was more valuable. Um, and currently... Egypt doesn't win by healing its board and getting more value out of its board. It wins by answering everything you throw at it and then just having more value for, than you in the late game. However, however, Focused Blast in this state could very well see de uh, play in an Isis deck in an Isis deck that has valuable afterlifes and focuses on playing a Sobek and then using that Sobek to great value. I suggest a kindly grandmother kind of style to an Isis minion um, that's a high mana cost for low stats that then dies and turns into high stats for low mana cost. We already sort of have that in Tomb Warden, which is definitely viable now in an Isis deck, but there's just not enough of those Tomb Warden styles in order for um, that kind of Isis deck to get value. Last Breath is one of the most balanced cards in the game, in my opinion. It is a lot of value, but it's RNG, but it works because there's not too many cards on board usually. And the value that you get is generally insane anyway. Four mana deal four even. You know, killing two two health minions. It's still pretty good. It's not great, but it's pretty good. And, you know, you can kill Ares Athena with this. You're just like, oh, value gasm, right? It's, it's wonderful. I, I love the fact that it's delayed, and I think that adds a lot to the card. Magma Sam is a 3 mana deal 3. It's pretty simple math, 1 mana for 1 damage. But I would absolutely love this to be an area targeter because I hate Loki. Loki is the one card in this game that you have almost no counterplay to other than execute, right? Loki is just like, nah. you thought you beat me because I'm Norse and you lasted until, you know, turn 7. Or the seven mana turn, eight mana turn. I'm gonna laugh in your face because I just spawned Web of Word last turn, and now I've got a Loki that's gonna come end your life because it does 80 fucking percent of your fucking stone's health, which is ridiculous, right? Even 60 percent of your stone's health is still ridiculous, and being able to deal with a Loki is great value, and I think. It won't consistently get that value, because if you're playing Egypt, you don't have the luxury for saving your Magma Slam for that hypothetical turn uh, where your opponent plays Loki. But if you do, you can be heavily rewarded for it. So I think that is a good reason to make Magma Slam an area targeter rather than just target an enemy unit. Or actually, target an enemy. It's not unit. You can target summoning stones with it as well, and leaders. Uh, meditation. Deathwalker got some great meme value to this card in a Sobek buff deck. 
I could see Sobek buff deck work that way in a hypothetical mid-range Isis deck that I mentioned in Focus Blast and a couple other times. Um, I would consider that card in that deck, but Ra's already got all the healing he needs, and there's no space for it in a Ra deck because it's not removal and it's not a key minion that you have to have. So I can't play it in Ra. You might play it in Isis, but even then, it's kind of iffy. But it, it does give a lot of value to Sobek, so don't uh, don't ignore it just yet. Recruiter, I think you need to be able to place units where I want them. Even if I don't know what unit I'm placing, positioning control is very important. And Recruiter offers zero positioning control. It is just completely random. And like I said earlier, with Evolve, summoning stones being spawn points makes it near impossible to use this kind of card. Even, you know, placing a waiting system and saying your random spawns will spawn around your leader unless all spawns around your leader are taken up, in which case they'll spawn around summoning stone one and then summoning stone two. And then there's map knowledge, right? Now I want to know which one is one, which one is two, where will it spawn? Where in general will it spawn? Is it worth playing now? Is it worth playing later? Should I body block my own leader in order to play this unit someplace else? Just having some form of control over where this card spawns would be a step in the right direction. Phantom's Grasp is a wonderful swing card, but there's little counterplay except in a mirror. However, I don't think it needs changing because it is a one of. Um, if you're playing Phantom's Grasp, it's generally in a late mana turn, so you're generally going to suspect that your opponent has it, but even then, you still can't directly play around it because it is a legendary, and sometimes your win condition says, I have to play this minion. If they have Phantom's Grasp, they have Phantom's Grasp. So I like where this card is currently, and it gives Egypt um, a way to grab a strong minion that they usually don't run in their own decks. Ritual Tribute is again with the random spawning. Even be able to choose which spawn area you spawn the unit, you know, Summoning Stone 1, 2, or Leader, would help. However, I consistently run this card due to its value, so maybe that would overbalance it. Um, I think that War Cries don't have to proc on this. Since it's only your graveyard, and you know what's in your graveyard, and if you choose to put War Cry minions into your deck and a Ritual Tribute, then you accept the punishment for doing so. However, I would still like to control generally where it's spawning. Sacrifice. Still that mid-range Isis deck and I have a brief card idea that I threw in here as well. It's a 4 mana 3-1 afterlife spawn a 2-1 afterlife spawn a 1-1. Just an initial thought that I thought up at like 1 in the morning. Yeah, It might be OP, it might not be powerful enough, but either way with Isis ability that would be pretty good. Scarab's Blessing. This is a really strong card, and it's kind of slept on, honestly. I, I run it as a one-of in my Rapeasement deck, but I might put it in my Control Raw as well, and I might make it a two-of in my Rapeasement deck, um, because it allows for Ra to get away with developing few but choice critters and making them sticky. And mid-range Isis with Isis ability would also be pretty powerful with Scarab's Blessing. So I think this card has a lot of potential, and I think the mana cost is appropriate, considering that... It's uh, permanent. You can um, capriolt somebody and they, they just don't die for a while. And then eventually they do die and then they just respawn with 2 HP. Which is pretty strong. You cast that on an Anubis pretty much every time. Solar Sanctum. Problem here is that as Ra, I don't have many critters on board. So it's not giving you much more value than just using your Ra healing, which is not a card, which doesn't take up a card slot, but maybe in a buff Sobek deck with mid-range Isis and Afterlife style, maybe you see Solar Sanctum as a one-of. I don't think it belongs as a two-of, though, because it means that you're way, way too defensive, and generally a mid-range deck does not like to be defensive, unless it's in a control matchup, in which case it kind of has to play aggro, so... In a, in a, I should say it doesn't like to be defensive unless it's in a mid-range mid-range matchup where both players choose to go for value, 
rather than rush. I think ward is a three mana draw two, which is standard. Oh, I skipped Sunder. Uh, one mana deal two, yes please. But it's pretty expensive the card space, so I think there's thought to whether or not, whether or not you run one or two, but you'll certainly have at least one. Also, the fact that this only deals damage to a unit helps to balance this incredibly efficient card. It's one mana, deal two, which is very, very strong. All right, going into Greek. A Beacon of Hope is, some, is a card that some of us will remember um, with lots of tears because this card looked broken because you could mana pot your Beacon of Hope on the three mana turn going second and spawn an Athena with Taunt that could then teleport into the enemy backline on the four mana turn while you're spawning your um, Thanatos and then you're just, you just won the game because Athena was broken. However, I think that since there are so many gods in Greek, this should be lowered to four mana and let me choose where to spawn my god. Either that or leave it at five mana, make it random, and give me war cry. That's my two options for making up that one, and I wrote my favorite one down, which is the four mana. I choose where to spawn it with no war cry. Because Greek has some pretty bad gods without war cry. It's a hefty discount for some, but not for others. And I think this is the best average value. Beacon of Hope has potential to be insane. Imagine if you get an Athena from it, right? You're just like, GG, I win the game, bro. But if you don't, you get a Nemesis. Nemesis hits your board and your backline hidden behind your stone. She's a melee character that didn't get her war cry, which is one of the main reasons that she's good. So you just didn't do anything. <laughs> Deathbringer lived and breathed with the OTK Fury Charge Deathbringer combo. It was the OG charge package back when Fury and Charge were both a neutral card. Um... It still has potential. Imagine a Deathbringer Nike does 12 damage, which is pretty nuts. Um, but there are so many cards with low attack value in Greek that I'd rather just run more value than a buffer. Um, although I will say Deathbringer on Hades is pretty scary. Because he's ranged. And because he has 6 health. For whatever reason. Divine Intervention is something that Strixus and I discussed for actually quite a while. And at some point in the game, this basically just tutors out specific cards for you. It's, it's a, three mana draw two is fine with ward, right? But somehow two mana draw two specific cards? Are you kidding me? It's not even slightly balanced. And since you're usually running, you know, around... 10 or 12 gods in a Greek deck, you're effectively cutting the card pool in half. So I think doubling the mana cost is appropriate. I think Divine Intervention needs to be worth four mana. Gem of Isolation. This saw play in the tournament that it was released before, but that was because it would affect the win condition, which was the leaders. Now, uh, at that point in time, if the leader died, you lost the game. So you, you were stuck. Your leader was stuck with one movement or two movement, which was bad. It was horrible for you. You were, you, you were just slow, and positioning is very important. But now, you just kill your leader, and you're just you're chilling, right? You know, who cares? I'll just replay it. Or the board state rotates so fast that one of my minions died? Okay, I'll just play the next one. Oh, it doesn't have gem anymore. <laughs> you know? Um, I'm not sure how you would balance this card or how would, how you would affect it to make it viable now, but I think upping leader health would certainly make this card seem more attractive. Um, guard is not a spell, it is a unit text, and is not 
going to ever be played as a spell. I don't care what you say, I will just run a baboon. Thank you very much. And I don't even run brute, which is the low mana guard option. So why would I ever put a guard as a spell in my deck? Answer, I wouldn't. Heavenly Agility. Movement speed is great and one mana is cheap, but the card slot is extremely expensive. There's no place for this card because it not, does not consistently provide value. I say that a lot. It has to consistently provide value in order to make its way into a tier 1 deck. Now, if you were to add Heavenly Agility's passive to a critter card, then I'll use it every time. But if you make it its own thing... I'm not going to use it because there's no point. I would rather just position well. Judgment is an excellent conditional card that deal two, uh, deal two or deal four. Um, I would love for this to target a tile instead of an enemy. That way you could deal with Loki. And if you don't want it to hit a summoning stone, then you can just type that and say, does not affect structures. Or does not affect summoning stones. Or, better yet, reclassify summoning stones. That way um, you can effectively not overbalance cards that want to remove uh, Roman structures. Purification. This can work wonders, and it's a choice to cut another useful card to run this situational spell. The 2 HP really does help it, and clearing CC is valuable in some situations. I think the card is balanced, though I certainly would not run two of it in a specific deck. Um, it's still pretty potent. Sanctuary is one of those cards that, again, has situational value. It's pardoned. It's, it's essentially a pardon for a turn, plus the ability to not take damage in return. I have not seen much testing of this card, but I think it's a bit overcosted. You're not paying 3 mana for the effect so much as you're paying a critter slot in your deck for a turn of great trades. I think the mana should be tuned down, and I think this card could see a play... Uh, could see a place, excuse me, in, say, a control grease deck. Because then you do want the best trades for the best value. But in a mid-range deck, I think it's a little too expensive. Sentry Ward. It's strong for control Zeus that seeks fatigue, or against a deck that has a few combo pieces. Think about the charge pal uh, package in Norse. It is a card draw from an enemy deck. And it is a draw from the enemy deck, not a replicate from an enemy deck. So it is very, very strong in that sense. However, Zeus will never win against a raw in fatigue anyway. So I don't think this is very good against um, a control v control matchup, but it is a strong card against combo pieces or against heavy value matchups. You know, if you save this for late in the game against a raw deck, you get a lot of value off of knowing what your opponent doesn't have. Shell. Okay, so we saw Bro play with this card, and I gotta look up what his name was. I've got it right here. Uh, Rosgras. My man Rosgras double shelled in his very weird mid-range Zeus deck last tournament. And hey, it really did some work, and Rosgras actually played very well and, and got quite far into the tournament. But with Spartan coming back into the meta, possibly, I don't see this card over Spartan anytime soon because one develops a minion and the other doesn't. The two can't really coexist, I don't think. Stone of Gaia. This is a meme card, but I think it could really be a serious choice if it targeted leaders. Teleport is an excellent one of. Strixus and I talked about this one for quite a while as well. It's, again, the payment for the card is not the mana cost, it's the critter slot. Um, this is a better Heavenly Agility that also moves the bad guys, so you never play Heavenly Agility over Teleport. Thorns. Now, Thorns in Smite procs on anything. If you get hit by something, 
it deals damage. Now, if this procced the same way in tactics, where if you used uh, ranged or AoE or an ability or whatever, and you had thorns on you, then this could be pretty good. Now, I'm not saying then that you should take full return damage. I'm saying you should take the thorns return damage, which is two. Which I think is excellent counterplay against AoE and uh, ranged characters. Because ranged characters are already broken. This is a way for melee characters to always do damage to a ranged character, which is very valuable. I think that is an excellent change that maybe you should consider. Obviously, I think it's excellent. I'm preaching it. Um, touch of Midas. Two mana to get a god. You could also just put that god in your deck. <laughs> um, it is worth considering in a control deck, but Z uh, Zeus tends to go mid-range, and it doesn't see much play. It's an excellent starter card, and I think it will see play in Tier 3 or Tier 2 decks. Weakening Curse got nerfed. Right now, it's just bad demoralized. Um, the only thing that I have a problem with is when you lower attack value to 1, it just delays the issue, and they come back just as strong later. But if this card were permanent, I think I would run it. Right now, it's just bad. You already have permanent 1 health in Norse for 1 mana, so why not make permanent 1 attack? Um, okay. Ansus, does, I don't run this card, but it does seem fairly balanced considering the tournaments that I've seen uh, might be slightly overbalanced and might need some toning down, uh, maybe by upping the mana cost to 3. Backstab is utterly useless um, in its current state because leaders are not a win condition and they die pretty quickly anyway. I've suggested a new style of card still called backstab that's three mana teleport a unit behind an enemy and deal your units damage without taking return damage but would still proc something like thorns um, this is basically loki <laughs> except it's a card so if you don't have a loki or if you don't want to run a loki now you can have little mini lokis that want to cosplay as loki and I, I think this would be pretty useful, and I think it would be very interesting, because you could do it with a ranged unit, or you could do it with a melee unit, and this would make Cursed Warrior in its current state as a 2-1 actually seem pretty decent, because you could spawn it way in your back, and then you could backstab it in and do, you know, 2 damage, and then now there's a 2-1 sitting in the enemy's back line, which is fairly useful, and this is something they got to deal with. Banish currently hits leaders and is currently a bug, but honestly, I would like it to remain that way. Gives you a reason to actually run it rather than just being Freya, uh, because currently it's bad Cataclysm for the exact same mana cost. Um, but Norse doesn't need buffs, so I'm okay with Banish being nearly unplayable. You can't run it because you have to win early, and Banish fits into a control deck, not an aggro one. So it just doesn't fit the Pantheon, honestly. Blink is a cool tech card. Um... And I think it's viable as a one of, or perhaps as a two of, but personally I, I don't run it. Um, and I think the cost for the card is again the spot in your deck. So I think the zero mana is perfectly fine. Charge is a very powerful card. It has spawned the charge package in Norse, as I refer to it as, which is two charges and then one plus of each BDK, Ymir, Loki, and Web of Work. I'd tone this up to two mana, or, or perhaps only and or, give it a penalty to the unit and say unit can attack immediately but then is exhausted on your next turn which is then saying i'm paying mana immediately because i need value from this now but i don't get value from it next turn unless my opponent attacks into it i think that would be a really excellent change to it coerce this won't see play because you'd rather run siege or frenzy and the hp is nice but it's not relevant enough to take one of those cards places or you can just run odin if you really want the hp Crippling Curse. I pray to the Elo gods that Crippling Curse will be removed from the game! That was rather aggressive. But Norse does not need a way to kill large opponents because that was one of the few ways it would lose. And now you're giving it away to deal with a large comeback card from Ra, from Greece, from Chinese. Honestly, any of those 
pantheons. Now Norse has a way to say, oh, that's a nice Ares you have there. Be a shame if anything would happen to it. Oops, I did seven damage with one card. Oops, I removed it with a leader auto. Oops, you lost. You know, <laughs> I, I don't think Crippling Curse is balanced, and I think it desperately needs to be changed or removed for the next patch so that I can stop crying myself to sleep at night. Degas. One damage is not relevant enough on a consistent basis for Norse to want to run this card. If Norse got a spell damage minion, then maybe it would see play in like a tier 2 meme deck. Um, and another possibility would be to spawn either a ranged unit or buff Cursed Warrior from a 2-1 to a 1-2. Two. 2 health is much better than 2 attack, in my opinion, in the in the uh, two mana slot, the one mana card, whatever, because each one's uh, anyway, each one's half a mana or f one mana. Sorry. Fate, fate is a card that used to see a lot of play, but now there's way too much RNG, and it only hits two damage on a target you want it to about 50% eh, of the time. And against wide boards, which is where you usually want to use it because it is only two damage, it hits even less often. There's no reason to play two damage. Um, fate to do damage to the stone or to a leader because you could just play siege or frenzy frenzy i like the choice that you make between running frenzy and siege perhaps a way to tone down these cards would be to allow it to activate a certain number of attacks or give it a delayed activation so the opponent has a chance to respond and remove those frenzied cards so you play it one turn and then the next turn it has its effect or if you play it one turn and it affects, you know, three attacks rather than everything you have on board and allows you to do like 15 damage in one turn, which happened to me once. Well, for me, I was going to win the game anyway, but still, regardless. Gunnir's Might is a two mana plus two attack. It can amount to a lot of efficient damage over time, especially on such a relatively tanky character. Eight health is a lot. Uh, at the moment, though, Norse has too many good critters to run to bother building a leader buff deck. When Freya was first released, we saw like a Mimi Freya buff deck, which wasn't horrible. It was a pretty high tier 2 or a low tier 1 deck. Um, but at this point in time, you don't do that. It's not worth it. You just run aggro. Haste and Vital is an excellent one of card and a wonderful win condition with a lot of burst potential from board. And since it's from door board, you have a decent chance at counterplay. Unless it's a Loki. Can you tell that I don't like Loki at all? Hunter Sigil will always find a home into North decks, Norse decks, and a 2-2 two, two on the first turn is pretty scary, but you can deal with it. An easy way to potentially nerf this card would be to release one drops and start the game at one mana which allows aggro less time that seems backwards but it allows the control decks more draws or mid-range decks more draws to find more answers to or play more minions early that aggro then has to deal with so one mana game would buff mid-range and control, in my opinion. Mayhem wants to efficiently clear minions, which it cannot do anymore. It's also a counter to Loki. I'd enjoy this card and consider it in a low tier 1 or a high tier 2 deck if it was not allowed to hit summoning stones, because it could deal with a Loki and it can deal with an early board, uh, which is what it's powerful at. Pardon is not currently being played, but that's because your leader dies too easily. If you could target any unit on the board, maybe this card would see some play. Get grab my water. Siege. This is identical to what I said about Frenzy because they're essentially the same card except Siege is 3 mana, which is why I run Siege, since Cleave uh, works off of the stones. So just run Siege, not Frenzy, to me, personally. 
Sprint is kind of like a worse fatalis to me, but it does allow for different win conditions, so it can be quite useful. Sprint is remove exhaustion. So you can uh, play it when the unit spawns if you'd like to remove exhaustion so it can essentially charge, or you can attack with it and then use sprint so it, then it can attack again. Or you can move, attack, use sprint, move, attack, which is better than fatalis in that specific scenario, but it's not very um, consistent, and consistency is a problem. Okay, let's get into the blessings. Valhalla's Blessing and Valhalla's Sorcery. Norse's weakness is that it's an aggro deck, and it usually runs out of gas unless you draw pretty well. Um, this card solves this problem, Valhalla's Blessing does, but it effectively draws a card for free. Right? Think about it. It's a one-mana spell, and it draws a Norse card from your deck, which is partially a tutor, and then it removes one mana from that card. So it literally draws you a card for free. And I think there should always be a cost with associated with drawing a card, and I think a one mana or even a two mana penalty would be appropriate uh, for Valhalla's Blessing. I'm okay if you want to discount the unit to make it feel better, but then it needs to be two mana to cast, at least. Valhalla Sorcery. Okay, the average spell for Norse is about 3.18 repeating mana. And you get three choices. So generally, since Valhalla Sorcery is a one mana card, you can generally play the spell that you discover if you choose the low spell. Um, and the penalty for um, choosing a card is not there. Norse runs out of gas, and this is more gas. In my opinion, players should feel threatened by the lack of cards more so than these discover options allow. Okay. Warrior Sigil. 2-1 is a super aggressive stat line, which seems valuable, but when you think about it, 1-2 may do the exact same damage while not being removed by range leaders for free. So I think 1-2 is much better than 2-1, uh, personally. Even uh, with the backstab change that I suggest, I think 1-2 is still better. Web of Word. Four mana is way too low. Plus two attack on Norse is valuable since you're, uh, when you're also developing another threat, and Norse gods cost about 3.8 mana to cast. Since so you're discovering three options, you can usually play something with six or seven mana spent, which means you can play it generally um, the, either the turn immediately afterwards, or you have a decent chance of being able to play it the same turn that you discover it. I think the attack buff needs to be toned down to one if it remains at four mana, or the mana cost must go up significantly. Wind Demon, I think, can be a decent discover option, but it's too situational for only plus one damage and pardon on a range unit. Um, pardon because it has five range and it can attack without being attacked back. Um, and on a melee unit, plus two to movement is good, but I don't think it's relevant enough to put in a deck. Okay, we're almost there, getting through Roman here. Armaments is a good card in Roman. There's a lot of counterplay to it. It makes mid-range control matchups against Rome trickier to manage. This is an excellently designed card, and I quite enjoy the way it, it plays currently. I currently run one. I don't run two, uh, because generally my minions are too expensive for me to bother running two. Battle Rage. I don't enjoy this card, but neither have we seen any attempts at aggro Rome. Perhaps that's a good thing, but maybe the new leader that's going to be released has a faster ability than Bologna's, and this card will become strong if uh, you can build an aggro Rome deck. It's certainly a good aggro card, but we just don't see that because we see mid-range and mid-range control um, in Roman currently. Bombard is useless. Bombard is a 3-mana deal 4 to the enemy leader if you have two structures on board. I don't care about killing the enemy leader that much. And the only time that I can see this being played is against Buff Freya as a tech card, which is not good. Um, perhaps dealing damage to one class of enemy unit, uh, damage randomly assigned or something of that sort would work better in this mana. For example, maybe I could target enemy structures, or enemy gods, or enemy beasts, or enemy minions, or enemy leaders. Just to have a little bit more effectiveness, because currently, I'm almost never clicking leader. Okay, Bulwark. 
two mana may be useful. Um, let me go ahead and look up Bulwark, because this is another card that nobody runs. I don't remember what it was. Bulwark, give your leader guard until next turn. Which is horrible. Um, because your leader having guard, while it can have value, it does not consistently have value. Which I've said so many times in this video, I think I'm going to like slam my head into the desk. But paying two mana card slot is not worth it. Maybe if you gave a friendly of your choice guard, it would be better. And I do mean permanently, not just for the end of your turn. Um, I think that could see some play. Or would see some play. In like a tier one deck, maybe. Demoralize. Works very well against aggro and could be a win condition against aggro. Um, need to see more Roman play to see if this card's OP or not. If it needs to be toned down. I haven't played much Roman because I don't think Roman's very good and I have been focusing on it. I've been playing a lot of raw. Dishonorable is very easy to play around on paper, but this card could be very interesting for ladder, although I don't think it will see any terminate play. I think you could up the damage to three because then it deals with Loki and also offers greater punish if you run it as a one of uh, if your opponent doesn't play around the card. I think dealing two damage is not enough. And this is a 5 mana deal 3 spawn a 3 cost, which is very efficient. And personally, I would lower damage 2. Develop developing the board and doing damage at the same time is extremely valuable in this meta. Um, I thought about saying just to target Loki, but I didn't feel like making a joke. Loki's pretty powerful, but he doesn't need counters in literally every other draw. Okay, Halt. Seems like a bad cataclysm, um, but we'll see how valuable deal one is in Chinese with spell power. And if you happened to put a minion into the game that gave Romans spell power, that could very quickly make this card quite relevant, as well as perhaps allowing for a Roman control archetype. March is a cool thematic card, but putting your deck is expensive. Uh, what can you cut for a damage boost spell? Um, damage boost to all of your minions though does seem pretty relevant in theory in roman and so if we do see an aggro roman leader you could see some marches in it because that could be pretty potent outmaneuvered is such a huge tempo loss for mid-range bologna but if you give me spell damage i will give you a control bologna that runs two of these because you can afford it um but not in a mid-range deck. I think Outmaneuvered is bad in a mid-range deck. It deals with one threat while simultaneously removing uh, one of your threats. And although you can make value trades with it, I don't think that's worth it. Though you might run it as a one-off. I might run it as a one-off. I'd have to... I, currently, I do not, but I could see an argument to run it as a one-off. Promote is... Uh, oops, I forgot to use Blown Ability. Good thing I brought this card. Uh, jokes aside, this is a form of healing. Um, and that is pretty rare in this game, so I think there's value for this card in Control Bologna, but that's just not as strong as Midrange Bologna. So give me a more aggro leader in Roman, and maybe you would have a Control Bologna, especially if you added that spell damage. Reign of Arrows is amazing, and I love the card design. I absolutely love it. It does a ton of damage, but you can play around it, and it deals with aggro. Um, and, hey, spell damage does a pretty good job of dealing with Loki with Reign of Arrows. So I would like to see spell damage in Bologna. You could make it into a control deck quite simply, I think. Last one is Reconstruct, which just screams, oh, just screams control Roman. Now, here's something I haven't tested. What if you Bologna ability and then cast Reconstruct as your spell? stone have 12 hp i actually want to test that after this game but i really 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 want to see control roman because there are a lot of tools to make it good just as long as there's a little bit of spell damage and then i think that's all you need honestly um regardless that is my thoughts of all of the items in the game currently which i spend way too many hours working on um 
feel free to leave a comment and uh, comment on my descriptions and my thoughts. I will link a uh, download or I'll, I'll link this particular um, document in the description as well in case you want to read it for yourself and uh, we'll see you soon.